suggest making this video to see whether or not after my I sold all my Neo shares video I still have some Neo viewers on this channel. And so if you are still a Neo user please smash a like that helps me to identify that the Neo gang and crowd is still on this channel. Because of course I did not sell my shares. This was just meant to explain you how the media works and let me just work like them for one day. And for the others, I'm sorry, sometimes this contains some sarcasm, irony and such. You really need to watch those videos till the very end in order to get my full opinion on things. And so thank you guys for the sticky crowd and let's dive into what is perceived bad news for NEO, the delivery numbers of July. So NEO has delivered 7,931 vehicles and now everyone who has expected 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 monthly deliveries will possibly sell off their NEO shares. But why not have a closer look at this first? So first off, it is an increase of 125% more or less year over year. So let me head over to the most comprehensive Excel sheet around NEO ever created and you will see that yes, the total here of the monthly deliveries is actually lower in July than it has been in June. 152 cars have been sold less than the month before. So yes, this is kind of a disappointment there. It's below the 8,000. But what you also need to consider from the press release, yes, that's still a 125% year over year increase. Now I know this feels terribly bad in comparison to the perceived competitors, Lee Auto, who has sold 8,600 cars more or less up from 7,700 last month. And then there's Axpung who has sold 8,000 cars up from 6,565 cars last month. So yes, these two competitors are pumping out more cars than NEO now and have actually jumped above the 8,000 cars um, monthly deliveries here, which is great news for these companies and for investors. That's also why at the point of this recording, they are nicely up in the pre-market. And of course, this is now causing headlines like NEO delivered fewer cars than Xpeng and Liaudo did in July. So let me give you some perspective there. Um, first of all, um, I wasn't expecting too much from this monthly number here. Um, I mentioned that in a Patreon post before. And um, yeah, I think uh, what matters more is to look for the quarterly numbers, the Q3 and Q4 numbers. And I will give you my take on that in a second and also why it matters in a way. But yes, um, it is, of course, we need to look into it if the monthly deliveries have been lower than the last ones. Because of course, growth is essential to NEO and the stock and the stock price and so on. So yes, this is, I don't want to diminish it or uh, talk this small. No, this is an issue issue that we need to have a look at. And so let me give you a, a couple of reasons uh, of that, um, why I think it could be the case. Reason number one, NEO has shipped a whole ship of ES8s to Norway. And as you can see here, we only have this picture. There's a line of one, two, three, four, five cars. And if I count it down the line here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, possibly even more than that, but this seems like a shipment of roughly um, 500 cars more or less. And these cars are not counted in delivery so far. So I would guess that these cars have been produced additionally and will at some point show up in the monthly deliveries later in the future. I made a video about this previously that I was also kind of disappointed that these cars are only leaving um, from China now. And I was actually in the opinion that I've sent some off previously, which would add a nice boost there. But on the other hand, this is now eating into the cake of the cars that have been delivered by NEO locally in China this month. And so it seems like NEO is still kind of supply constrained there. So the reason number two why it possibly haven't delivered more in uh, China in this month is I guess there are still um, issues with the chip shortage and I hear it from other car manufacturers as well. Um, I also see some positive news like um, some of the um, Japanese plants and so on that are producing parts of the chips and so on are now ramping up again. But I couldn't rule out that NEO is still affected on uh, producing cars because it seems like they could have possibly already delivered more if they delivered more than 8,000 cars last month. A third possible explanation is that 
Tesla Model Y has been eating into the sales of um, new cars and possibly also with the price reduction of the uh, standard range. And I do think there are some effects on NIO um, for sure because this, uh, and I made a video about this uh, before, that this car is just so uh, attractively priced that I do think there will be some consumers opting for a Tesla instead of a NIO. But I do think the effects will be quite tiny and marginal and doesn't change the overall story. And so the fourth reason uh, why this could be is actually something that is more on the fundamental side uh, to explain things and something um, that is happening um, in the past as well, which is that usually the first month of the quarter is showing also a slight Dip because for instance to the end of the last quarter you would want to put out as many cars and sell off as you can. This effect shows most strongly with Tesla but also sometimes for NEO. So for instance if we look at this chart here and what you see here is January to July sales. So compared to um, 2020 which, was the, uh, which is the red line here versus 2021 which is the blue line uh, in absolute numbers here. So that's the, the uh, thick line and then the dotted line is the linear growth trajectory. Um, auto generated by Excel and so you can see that in the past for NEO in 2020 for instance the first month of Q3 in July was also lower than uh, in June so the same pattern we can see here once again for NEO this time and if you compare it um, you will see like the steepness of the growth trajectory is quite similar for the first seven months into the year. Uh, notably now this is happening at a much bigger scale, right? So NEO is already producing double of the amount of cars than uh, last year basically. So this is still the overall trend of growing more than 100% year over year. So these kind of monthly dips month over month can happen. Uh, and uh, we had the same in, for instance in April this year uh, as well. So let's look at the bigger picture. And that's why I'm saying we need to look at the quarterly numbers basically because uh, now you see that 2020 here scaled out on uh, the year to December uh, that the steepness of the curve is actually rising here because towards the end of the year um, basically starting from August into December we will see higher tra uh, growth trajectories actually happening and then in the case for instance that this would also happen the same here towards the end of the year that would obviously also um, kind of pull this line up a little bit here and overall I would say what is important here for NEO is to maintain a growth trajectory above 100% to around about 130% year over year growth because then we will be fine to land between 90,000 to 100,000 cars for the entire year and giving NEO a growth rate that is more than 100% which is already faster than what has for instance Tesla done um, back in the years when Tesla was a much younger company but um, you know judge from where they have started out at the point zero in time. Now I know I know this doesn't um, explain why Li Auto and uh, Xiaopeng are now growing faster right they don't have this monthly dip and are outselling NIO and you know what I think that was to be expected to be honest I never had um, assumed that NIO uh, would actually keep growing faster than Xpeng in the future in fact Xpeng needs to grow faster than NIO and I mentioned that in a couple of videos actually in the monthly deliveries videos um, before and the reason for that is that it's actually apples and pears you need to be aware that Xpeng is an entirely different market segment so if you look here at this chart which is more about the premium um, brands in China you will see that NIO um, is actually having some of the highest average sales prices in the industry competing much more with the Mercedes-Benz uh, and also even Tesla has much lower average sales prices and possibly will so have them in the future going forward. They have now reduced um, the, the prices for the Model Y as well as for the Model 3. And so I think there is rather an issue for Xpeng in the future because they really need to keep this growth um, coming and um, outgrow NEO um, really bigly and, and on the other hand uh, I think they have an issue with Tesla coming uh, at their field and their customers and their customer segments there and so I'm not quite sure actually if Xpeng will manage to um, create a 
piece of the pie uh, that is enough there. Um, so that's why I'm also thinking that uh, Axpon in general will be limited at some point in what they can achieve as a company. I do uh, regard it well and I do realize that Axpon is doing a fantastic job there. So congratulations for everyone rooting for this company. But for me, that doesn't make a, a good investment in the end. Um, and I don't think at some point that the higher sales numbers uh, for Xpon can actually keep pushing the share price anymore. And uh, in comparison to that, NEO has an entirely different um, story and vision and also uh, company setup and basically um, needs to sell much fewer cars um, at the same time and can make a higher um, yeah, earnings from that actually than Xpong. And this is actually a positive about this delivery report because as you can see in July they've delivered 1,700 ES8. That is the highest priced car of the NEO fleet and much more actually than in June. So we can expect much higher incomes and revenues here for NEO at this time. And then just on top of the ES8s which they have delivered in China all of the cars sent to Norway are also ES8. So that's a massive high revenue, high yield car that I have sent overseas there as well. So this is why you cannot simply just look at the monthly numbers here for those kind of delivery updates and you need to look a bit deeper on that. And it's the only company in my views in China that has significantly diversified and have a, a, a unique uh, USP against Tesla. And so for me, that's why I'm also rooting for NIO in, in, at yeah, the most here and think that um, Tesla and NIO are the two big companies to invest in. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. It's not investment advice. You may well uh, judge differently. Um, but that's how and where I'm going to put my money also in the future. And I also don't like to compare Neo to, for instance, Li Auto because Li Auto is basically a hybrid car. So it is also uh, doing quite well. I think for both uh, Li Auto and Axpong, the big uh, question going forward will be how will they manage to create something unique and also how will they manage to use autonomy technology in order to um, show something how they can uh, kind of find an edge towards competitors because frankly on the cost side and the price and uh, the brand I think they will not be able to match with Tesla for instance and so um, I don't rule out that they may uh, find ways on doing that for instance on the autonomy side so that's the big argument for Xpeng for instance and also Li Auto I have to recognize is doing a great job on this side um, but on the other hand, I think NEO is also coming strongly around the corner there with the ET7 being launched soon. And I'm expecting a lot of it from the uh, autonomous driving functionalities there and a, and a big leap. And then also we have some um, yeah, kind of rumors only by now, but what's going to happen on NEO day this year, um, possibly launching two models and also I think some other news on the autonomous driving technology side. So in general, this is how I regard those numbers and why I still think they are kind of in line with uh, what is to be expected. Um, certainly not um, numbers that blow me away in the same, uh, at the same time, right? So it is uh, important to look at this critically. And I'm also uh, having to see like, yes, uh, NEO seems to have some issues there on uh, the scaling and ramping side in terms of getting over this chip shortage where others uh, seemingly don't have that issue now with, for instance, um, Xpeng. But um, yet this doesn't change anything on the fundamental side of my investment thesis in EO so far. I will, I, in the beginning, going into this year, I, I would have taken an 85,000 deliveries this year, which would basically be a doubling. But still, it seems like we are well on track to deliver more than that in, in uh, this year. So, so yeah, this is basically it. My take on the deliveries. Let me know down in the comments whether or not you are disappointed. And if you consider selling your shares because of that, let's see how the markets react today. Um, the markets are still not open as I uh, record this video. And then, yeah, stay tuned for more stuff. I also have just published a new video or, around um, Xnet Shinlay, a very deep dive video on that for my patrons over the weekend, if you're interested in that. Then please feel free to join our patron. And also if you are uh, looking to get more insights from other investors and talk about it, then 
become a NEO gang member or a Tesla newly rich. So, so that's the 10 US dollars um, tier where you get additional insight and access to the network so that you can also have this community feature um, functionalities. Anyways, thank you guys for staying loyal to this channel. Please subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss out. Um, right now I'm really on the run and doing a couple of videos uh, every other day, but so much is happening right now. So basically looking forward to giving you more deep dives on the companies again. So possibly still have to explain a lot of the ups and downsides of uh, Chinese stocks. But yeah, that's for now. <laughs> Uh, Neo deliveries, that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching. See you soon.